Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to use food chains to represent feeding relationships within a community. You should then be able to describe how the numbers of predators and prey change over time. In a recent video we saw that organisms can be affected by a number of biotic factors, and one of these is a source of food. So in this video we're looking at how scientists use food chains to represent this. I'm showing you here a very simple food chain. We've got grass, which is eaten by rabbits, and in turn these rabbits are eaten by foxes. We'd find this food chain in the UK. OK, I'm showing you another food chain here. We start with a tree, and the leaves of the tree are eaten by a caterpillar. The caterpillar is then eaten by a bird. Now if we look at both food chains, you can see that they both begin with a green plant. Scientists call these the producer, and every food chain starts with a producer. In most food chains, the producer is a green plant, just like in these two. In the sea, the producer could be an algae, such as seaweed. Now, producers are extremely important in food chains, and that's because they synthesize complex molecules. As we've seen before, green plants make the molecule glucose by photosynthesis, and to do this, they use energy from sunlight. Scientists call molecules such as glucose biomass. And these molecules now pass down the food chain to the other organisms. So the producers are the source of all the biomass in a community, and that's why producers are so important. Organisms that eat the producers are called primary consumers, and you need to learn that. In the top food chain, the primary consumer is the rabbit. And in the bottom food chain, the primary consumer is the caterpillar. As you can see in both these food chains, the primary consumer is then eaten by another animal. Scientists call these animals secondary consumers. So a secondary consumer is an animal that eats a primary consumer. OK, I'm showing you a different food chain here, and you'll notice that this food chain has four stages. In this case, the producer is a tree, the primary consumer is a caterpillar, and the secondary consumer is a small bird. Now in this food chain, the secondary consumer is then eaten by a bird of prey. So in this food chain, the bird of prey is the tertiary consumer. Remember that a tertiary consumer eats a secondary consumer. Okay, now if we go back to our first food chain, we can see that in this case, the rabbits are killed and eaten by foxes. Consumers that kill and eat other animals are called predators. So in this food chain, the fox is a predator. The animal that's being eaten is called the prey. So in this case, the prey is the rabbit. Looking at the second food chain, in this case, the predator is the bird and the prey is the caterpillar. I'm showing you here a graph of the populations of predator and prey in a community. For example, rabbits and foxes. Now, I should point out that we'd see a similar shaped graph with any predator and its prey. The key idea that you need to understand is that the numbers of predator and prey rise and fall in cycles. Imagine that one year the population of rabbits increases. For example, it could be a warm summer, so there's plenty of grass for the rabbits to eat. That means that more of the rabbit's offspring survive, so the rabbit population increases. Now the foxes have more rabbits to kill and eat, so after some time the fox population also increases. However, because there are more foxes, that means that more rabbits will be eaten. So now the population of rabbits falls. Now the foxes have fewer rabbits to kill and eat, so after some time the population of foxes also falls. At this point, because the number of foxes has fallen, more rabbits will now survive and reproduce, so the population of rabbits now increases again. And again, because the foxes now have more rabbits to kill and eat, after some time the fox population increases again. So as you can see, the numbers of predator and prey rise and fall in cycles. Now I should just point out that this is only true in a stable community. And remember that a stable community is one where all of the biotic and abiotic factors are in balance. If something changed in the community, for example a drought happened, or a new predator arrived, then predator-prey cycles would start to change. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on food chains and predator-prey cycles in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.